guys, welcome to the vlog. My name is Mr. E.T. and in today's vlog, I finally give you an overview and my initial thoughts of my Mark 7.5 Golf R. Stay tuned. So if you're new to this channel, I like to do how-tos, reviews, and I install parts on various different cars, including this Mark 7.5. Golf R, so please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. So in today's vlog, I'm going to go over what I really like about this car. What I don't like quite that much, I'm going to compare it to my previous Mark 7.5 uh, GTI that was a 2015. And I'm also going to give you my overall thoughts around how I feel this car will do year-round as a daily driver. So let's start talking about the differences between the Mark 7.5 Golf R and the Mark 7.5 GTI. So of course, the biggest difference is the all-wheel drive system. That is absolutely fantastic, by the way. The second difference, of course, is the engine. So it is the same two-liter block, but instead of making 210 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, this one makes 288 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. And so it's got a revised cylinder head, it's got a bigger turbo, it's got a few little things that are different on the bottom end to really give you a little bit more horsepower and more torque. And you can really feel it. And between you and I, I believe this car is actually underrated and probably makes closer to 310-ish horsepower and about the same as far as torque. The next thing in my case is I had a manual six-speed transmission in my previous car and this is the seven-speed DSG transmission. So I've got a few different driving modes that were not available in the GTI, one of them being race and uh, unfortunately I do also have a feature with the DSG where the engine will start and stop just to save a bit of gas and we're gonna go over that in a few moments but that's definitely not something I like very much. Aside from that, you delete the sunroof on the Golf R and you also do not have the fog lights. The fog lights I do miss a little bit, but these headlights are absolutely fantastic at night and they look really cool as well. So let's start by talking about the things I really love about this car. So it has a leather interior, it's very, very comfortable, it's very daily drivable, it is easy to live with, it has an outstanding uh, seven speaker Fender audio system, it has wonderful LED taillights, it has really, really great Xenon headlights, uh, the engine power is outstanding, the seven speed DSG is a huge upgrade even though I've done a video and I, I will link that up here um, comparing the DSG and the six-speed they both have their pluses and minuses but uh, at this point in my life I feel like the DSG was the right move for me and it really makes this car a weapon just to drive around uh, what else do I really like about it it has bigger stronger brakes um, it is a more fun to drive car in my sense all year round than the GTI was. This is one of the best daily drivers you will find in this category, in this price range overall. If you're looking for a car that's gonna get you around, that's gonna get pretty decent gas mileage, that you're gonna be able to drive around all year, that's gonna be comfortable, dynamic, that's gonna be very quick, that's gonna stop on a dime, that's gonna turn uh, very very effectively this is a really difficult package to beat so of course the front is way more aggressive looking than the GTI was it has the upgraded headlights you can see that the bumper is just completely different on the GTI it looks like it's a happy uh, looking front end on this thing it looks like it's mad I actually like the look of this one a lot better than the look of the GTI and you have our badges pretty much everywhere on this car you'll find them on the door sills on the steering wheel on the seats of course on the front you'll find them on the side of the car on the back of the car in the digital cockpit and in a number of various different areas as well as the engine cover also 
On the rear, aside from the upgraded taillights, different in the Mark 7, um, you also have the quad exhaust, and that's really the biggest difference you're gonna see on an R versus a GTI. You also have this valance here at the bottom, that's a bit different, and the exhausts are actually active on this car. So if you go into race mode, it actually activates a valve, and the exhaust gets a slight little bit uh, louder. Now, I've been the proud owner of this car for about four weeks now, and as you can see, there is snow on the ground. It is the month of November in uh, Quebec, and to be honest with you, this is just the start of a very, very long season. So one of the main reasons I bought this car was that on top of wanting to upgrade from a manual to an automatic transmission, I really, really wanted the all-wheel drive and it has surpassed my expectations everywhere. This thing from a standstill, even in the snow, just really, really goes. And I absolutely love that. Now, for those wondering on the channel who've been following me for some time, what the first mod is gonna be on the car? Well, you're actually looking at it. The windows are now tinted, so they're tinted 15% in the back, 50% in the front. And I've also done a clear bra on the hood just to protect it, because when we do clear the roads here uh, to make sure that there is no ice in the winter, there's a lot of salt and a lot of rocks, and unfortunately that can damage the front of the car. I had not done that on the GTI, and I regretted it ever since I purchased it new, so this time around, I went ahead and decided to install clear bra on the front of the car. Now, as far as things that I don't like on this car, there are not really that many, to be honest with you. Uh, being that this is an all-wheel drive car, it does have a turning radius that is slightly longer than the GTI's was. And unfortunately, when you're trying to really get around uh, and do a UE or something like that, it is a little bit more difficult to do. So you have to be mindful of that. But aside from that, um, you know, I feel like you really get the best version of the Mark 7 in purchasing a 2018-2019 Golf R. And I decided to purchase this specific Lapis Blue color because this is the unique color to this car. And I wanted to make sure that I had what I feel is the best version of this car. There is a new version that is coming in in 2021. I don't believe I'm gonna be going for that version. I don't really like the way the, the exterior looks. I'm not liking the reviews really that much on the interior. Even though it looks cool, it doesn't look quite as usable as it is in this specific car. So I'm very, very happy with the purchase here and look forward to using this car for many, many years to come. Now on the interior, you basically get the same seats as you would in a GTI. These are of course leather, instead of being the Jack Terry cloth that I had in the previous version. The driver's side seat is actually power instead of being manual, but unfortunately, even though this is a $43,000 car, the passenger seat I'm currently sitting in is still manual. or I should say semi-manual because the top actually reclines with a power feature but to go front and back you're still using a lever. Now I've got about 5,000 kilometers on this car. I purchased it brand new but the car already had a little bit of kilometers on it when I did purchase it. Uh, so what I can tell you in driving it myself for about a thousand kilometers now is this is really really enjoyable it warms up quickly in the morning because it is a turbo car and it has the all-wheel drive um, you know you get those heated seats in the winter which is a must uh, the digital cockpit actually responds very quickly so it doesn't feel laggy or anything like that i've actually set mine up so that, that i can see the maps in the middle there and the infotainment system in this car which uses the mib2 is actually quite a bit more responsive than it was in my previous car. It is also of higher quality. The camera is, uh, or looks actually a lot better when you're backing up. And you do have quite a few different features. The most notable difference being that you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
And now, of course, if you have a GTI that was 2016 and up, you had that as well, but I had the 2015 version, which did not have an Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, you guys are gonna see this in an upcoming video, but the very first thing I will do, aside from tint and uh, 3M on the front, is I'm actually gonna power up my OBD11, and I'm gonna be deactivating or changing a couple things. One of the most notable things I'm gonna change is actually gonna be deactivating this auto start-stop, uh, where every single time I start the car, I have to turn that off. Uh, and I don't really enjoy doing that. Um, I didn't buy this car to get, uh, you know, eight liters per hundred kilometers or 35 miles a gallon. I bought this car before because I wanted something that was performant, something that was fun to drive, something that was very dynamic, something that was comfortable and great to daily drive. I didn't buy this thing to really save on gas that much. So I'm gonna be deactivating that. I'm gonna be playing around with the sound actor a little bit as I did in my GTI because I don't like that real fake noise. I will likely modify a couple things to get some real noise out of this car. Not too much because I wanna keep daily driving it, but perhaps just a little bit more personality than it has right now. So let's continue now and I will take you guys on the road and we'll keep talking about how I feel about this car. So. As you guys can see, I'm in this pit of snow here, and I'm basically just gonna press on the gas. In a normal front wheel drive car, I would have trouble getting out of this space here because the snow is way above uh, the, a normal level on a street. And because of the all wheel drive, it's basically like nothing else, right? So now that we're on the road, I'm gonna give you an idea of how this car feels and how it drives. So I'm just uh, on a road here going about uh, 50 kilometers an hour or about 35 miles an hour. Uh, it's just a residential area here. It's very comfortable to drive. Um, I've got the 17s on for the winter. They do barely clear the brakes, but they do. I've got the 19s on in the summer. And to be honest with you, with the active suspension on this car, depending on the mode that you're in, you can definitely feel a difference in the harshness for the ride. But in comfort mode, which is what I'm in right now, this is actually really comfortable to drive. Let's see if you guys can hear the difference here, but I'm gonna go from comfort to race. And there's gonna be a notable, noticeable difference in the way I'm gonna hear the engine through the sound actor here. So as you can see, the ride is a little bit harsher. Maybe you can see that through the camera and uh, I can certainly feel it. So that's a, an interesting thing is sometimes in certain cars, you have some, um, some different driving modes and you can't really feel the difference. In this car, you can really feel the difference when you're going from one to another. So just getting on the highway here, I can be on the power really, really early. I'm gonna negotiate this, uh, this S-curve. And on the power, and we can be on the power a lot earlier here. Because of this all-wheel drive system. So I'm sitting in race mode on the highway. The transmission is in sport. So it is keeping the revs at 2,500 RPMs and I'm going 105 kilometers an hour, so about 61, 62 miles per hour. Um, and if I just switch that down to drive, it's gonna drop a little bit below 2,000 RPMs, so about 1,900 or so. So if you're just driving around, of course, keeping it in drive is the thing to do. But if uh, you wanna pass somebody, and I'm gonna do that here, this is the way to go. And this thing will actually keep your gear a lot longer than a traditional automatic transmission. It will also downshift, so you can actually hear the cracks and pops as it's downshifting for you, which is really interesting and makes the driving experience a little bit more fun. And I'm just gonna loop around and get back on the highway. Now you have to be careful with this car because 
it has a substantial amount of power so going way above the speed limit is quite easy to do so now let's switch ourselves into manual mode so i'm currently in third gear and keep it in that gear just as we're going around this corner and let's go absolutely no slip and we're gonna slow this thing down here and let's go back into drive we'll put everything back into comfort and we're back to just driving perfectly standard car. So that is the absolute beauty of this Mark 7.5 Golf R is when you want to go fast, you go fast. If you want to just drive around and you want to drive with your family members and you just want to putt around slowly, it does that very well. So this thing, depending on how you feel and how you want to drive, will just adapt to your needs. And I've very rarely seen other cars in this price range be able to achieve that as well as the Mark 7.5 Golf R is able to do. So after four weeks, I am over the moon happy with this car. I love the technology, I love the drive, I love the comfort. I love the fact that it's not over the top. I work a corporate job from eight to five five days a week and I don't want something that makes me look like I'm a boy racer that was something that was cool maybe 20 years ago for me but now um, you know I have three kids I have uh, a pretty decent job uh, that's not what I'm looking for anymore and this thing basically looks like a normal golf when you need it to and when you want performance there it is um, so overall really really happy with this purchase and if any of you guys are looking to purchase a 2016 to 2019 Golf R no matter what version you're gonna buy whether it's the automatic whether it's the manual uh, whether it's the mark 7 or mark 7 and a half you cannot go wrong this is just a fantastic car to drive to live with every day and all that's left really for me is to see how this car ages to see if the reliability will be there but if i take for a second my mark 7 gti which i had for five years and i drove for close to 70,000 kilometers about 50,000 miles that thing was outstanding so i'm expecting the mark 7 really to be the first real version of these uh, volkswagens that is really reliable that is really well built and that doesn't have um, issues very very often so i guess we'll see at this as this thing ages stay tuned for our next video where we go into the computer we install the obd11 and we start playing around with a few features disconnect or deactivate I should say certain things that I don't like activate other things that are not activated from the factory and I look forward to seeing you again in our next video